All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over how to take a military trailer, take the connection that is for a military vehicle and convert it over to using a civilian connection for a regular truck. I'm holding a seven pin, but you can use the information I'm gonna give you and use it to convert over to a regular four pin as well. Also, about switching over the regular light cans in the back to a 12 volt bulb from 24 volt. This is a M116A3 trailer. This process pretty much applies to all kinds of different trailers. Uh, your M1101, M1102, M101, all variants, M116, all variants. The newest edition out here filming already. Here's pretty much what you need for this project. It may vary slightly depending on what trailer you're using. All the supplies and stuff, if you don't have them, links in the description to get them off Amazon and most of it you can get the next day. If you're not the handiest person in the world, it's probably going to take you just as long to watch this video completely through than it will to do the project. This is very, very simple. People overthink it. The only thing that I don't have here, because I've, I've already done some of the work, is either your seven pin RV type adapter or your four pin adapter. Whatever one you're gonna use, you obviously need that. Nine sixteenths, both ratchet and wrench. Cutters, wire strippers, some sort of butt connector crimpers. I'm using a multi-screwdriver. If you don't have a multi-screwdriver, a Phillips and a 5 16 nut driver or a 5 16 wrench will work. I prefer 5 16 like nut driver simply because if you use like a wrench and you got a rusty one, you'll break it off and cause more of a problem. You don't have to have this, but dielectric grease is good to have. Some of these heavy duty zip ties are good for neatening things up. Electrical tape, some butt connectors, and then the bulbs you need. And you can get LED versions of these, 97, 1156. It says right here on two, you can also use 1155s. Uh, the trailer in front of me here, is a M1101 chassis trailer, which is basically the generator version of the very popular M1101 uh, cargo trailer, which kind of looks like a Humvee bed. And what comes on them is the 24 volt connector that's standard for a military vehicle. And there's adapters out there that are extremely expensive and a tremendous waste of money unless you intend to keep this because you also are going to tow it with a Humvee. So on this one, basically just follow the pigtail and underneath all your wire connectors are right here. I don't know if on the M1101 or O2s it's in the same exact spot, but there's going to be something like this and all the connectors I'm going to talk about are in this spot right here. From this point forward, I'm actually gonna move forward and convert a M116A3 trailer. Here on the M116A3, they should have this little cover right here. Sometimes it's 5 16 sometimes it's a Phillips head, sometimes it's whatever, whoever worked on it last had to shove in these holes. There's two here, there's two underneath. They tend to get a little rusty. I soaked them in some PB Blaster. Same deal here, sometimes it's Phillips, sometimes it's 5 16 Kind of holds the end of the military harness there. Then a 9 16 bolt and nut holding that on. And then that will free up this and give you access to the wires. And then there's gonna be something holding the grounding part on. First part is we're gonna work on getting that all exposed. <laughs> What you're going to want to make sure of is before you start disconnecting all these connectors, if you didn't know these are called Packard connectors, you can see all these little pieces of aluminum. Sometimes they get really covered in dirt or they've been painted over a bunch of times. There's numbers stamped on them. These are critical and there's numbers stamped on each side. Depending on the model trailer you have, there's going to be little variants. Ultimately what you want to make sure is that on each one of the wire sets and on each side that they're readable. Then you can start disconnecting them. When these are together for a while, they'll get sticky. Now it's pretty normal if they've 
been together for a while on older trailers, you'll see, like I'll do it on purpose because this trailer is actually not that old, so they're going to come apart pretty easy. Where, go figure, I'm, I'm probably not going to, uh, it looks like on this one it will do it a little bit. So if you pull them apart, that the actual rubber sleeve will kind of slip back. And then basically inside of these, they're just like a heavy duty regular butt connector. That's okay. Doesn't mean that they're bad. As long as the metal piece on the inside, on both sides, you need one is male, one is female. They're still going to work. Even if these are kind of like the rubber is really messed up, really what these are for is to just kind of keep dirt and crap out. So you can still use them if you want. Um, but if they pull away, what you can do is put them back together and then slide them over. But I'll, I'll go over that more once we put the thing together. I'm getting ahead of myself, but kind of twist them. So they're totally free. Let's leave these to the side for now. Forgot to mention the screw or the Phillips, whatever it was on your trailer. I put it back in. I tuck the ones to the side over here. Reuse that same exact one as the ground because it probably already had a good ground. There's always going to be, you'll see what they usually do, is they they grinded away the cark so that way, the cark paint, so that the way there was a good ground here. So now that this is totally free, we want to go over to the bench. All right, so this is where you start making your harness and you start using the numbers. This is where you can kind of drift off from what I'm exactly gonna show you. A lot of people, because they're building stuff with battery banks, this is where you like to use one of these junction boxes because you wanna be able to charge a battery off of one of the seven pin connectors like an RV does and stuff like that. So with a seven pin connector, you're gonna wanna match the colors off of this. It's gonna be the green wire is gonna go to number 21 and then 21 might be prefixed or prefixed by something else. 22, 460 goes to brown. 22, 461 goes to red. And then the white wire goes to your ground. If you're doing a four pin, 22, 460 goes to your green wire. Brown goes to number 21. Yellow goes to 22, 461. I'm gonna do all this work and fast forward. You're just gonna splice and butt connector together everything. I'm gonna put everything I just said just kind of over my fast forward so it's up on the screen for you to write it down. One thing to note about using the connectors, I have a link down in the description to the seven pin connector that I use on all the conversions that I've done for these trailers. There's some cheaper ones out there. They don't work as well. I've noticed that the heads break easier also they have a much shorter cable. You need a long cable for these to reach where the connection is. All right, so tug these, double check your numbers and make sure everything matches up. If you wanna take these off and keep them as spares and snip them off, good idea to do. I snipped off the unused cables on here. That's never been an issue for me. Some people would probably disagree with that. I'm just gonna do wrap around on each individual wire. I'm not really worried about making it look too neat. You can use heat shrink if that's what you prefer, just to isolate each one of these separate. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was on the seven pin harness is the grounding wire that's white is a pretty thick gauge. You can either get a ring terminal and put it directly on there to ground it directly with it, or I like to just use the pigtail that exists. I just thin the wire out a little bit and use the butt connector. <clears throat> you could probably see that in the fast forward. I will wrap them all together. And this is where you can go all out and make it look nice because this is where you're sealing it up good. If you're not 100% confident in your connections here, then you might want to wait until after you test everything to do this part. So. Now that that's ready, we can get ready to put this back on the trailer. All right, so the next step is just connecting everything here and just taking a little bit of it and inside the connectors, even if they're in the ones that you're not gonna use, it'll just protect them if for some reason you're gonna end up using them in the future. It's not gonna hurt to just gob the inside because what it'll do is if you do need to disconnect them down the road, it'll make them disconnect a lot easier. And you only really need to do this one side because once you shove the other one in, it 
puts the lubricant all over the place. The reason why you reuse the old harness is now you simply match the numbers back up like the military would. That's why you confirmed that you had the numbers readable. All right, this is the clip I wanted to splice in. I was talking about earlier about if the rubber boots kind of pull apart and you could see I already pulled them apart on this type, this little brass piece right here, this can actually fall off. You can actually, you can still use it if it's gone or missing, but it's supposed to be replaced like that. You already kind of saw earlier what I did. If they come apart, the best thing to do is just when you go to put everything back together, reassemble the butt connectors like this, then slide this side up all the way, then slide this side up. Get it started. This is where the dielectric grease helps. It helps this rubber slide together and then twist them all the way together like that. Sometimes they won't meet up with that rib all the way. There she is all buttoned up. I used some big zip ties and tucked a little bit of it away up in there. Don't forget to tighten this back up. Did that off camera and I didn't want to really reuse that little clamp that's here because the military one has that spring around it that protects it so when the trailer's shaken it won't wear through the protector. You might want to wait to close everything up before you test, but at this point for me everything's finished up here in the front. We'll move to the back. All right, sometimes these screws are a Phillips, sometimes they're a flat, sometimes they're a both, sometimes they're a mix. They should be a captive screw, so you can see once they're loose, they shouldn't fall out. What ends up happening, especially on trailers, is the troops end up just using whatever they have laying around to make them work, if they actually work. Um, you can see these ones are bent up. A lot of times at the auction yards, they're actually using big forklifts to pick these trailers up and they get bent all the way up here. Uh, you can get a big crescent if need be and kind of bend these brackets back down. I already did that. You can see maybe that I already bent them back down. So when you get it loose, Work it off. It might be a mix between paint and the gasket. I didn't get it loose all the way. Make sure they're all the way off. Make sure this gasket is number one here and number two not ripped and make sure it stays in the lens side because otherwise this is going to be getting filled up with water. It may already have gotten filled up with water if it's not there. Your bulbs are basically going to match up with the way that they look top and bottom. Very self-explanatory. If they're not already coated well. Like see, this trailer's not that old, so there's already some dielectric grease on there. I don't really need to do much. I'm just gonna put the new bulbs in. They install just like a regular light socket and make sure they're in there, twist and lock. Now these down here are your blackout lights. Sometimes they might have similar looking bulbs to these. These ones have LEDs in here. Just leave them, tighten this back on. Once it's all tightened back up or you're leaving it off, get your tow vehicle and you're going to test the lights. If everything went well, it should work. All right, we're gonna test the lights now, see if everything works. All right, I'm gonna start with putting them on. Good. Hazard. Good. Brakes. Good. Left turn signal. Good. Right turn signal. Good. That's that. Lights are working. That's a summary of the cheap and easy way to take your military trailer and switch it over to 12 volt to pull with a civilian vehicle. I'm gonna splice in a little tidbit right after this on some quick troubleshooting. There's a billion things that can go wrong with an old military surplus thing and wiring and things being broke. But um, hopefully this is helpful. I wanna record before ending the video about troubleshooting. Just in case you finished up the project and you watched the video and you did everything right and you're like, gosh dang, my lights aren't working. And the reason why I'm doing this is I actually had a problem and I know I did everything right. And my problem was when I put on my right signal or the hazards, this is the bulb that's supposed to illuminate and this one was illuminating and it was illuminating really dimly. 
All my wiring was correct. The issue is, is inside these light cans, you can see I have a repair right here. I, I made this repair. This is like a, if you see on a proper one, there, there actually is a pop rivet here and a wire, but it's in behind and it runs to behind. There's a stud that goes to where the threads that mount it. And that's what grounds this whole light can to the trailer. That's why there's no ground light. You can actually see one back here. That one, I, I, I don't really know. That one is actually going, you can see it pop rivet right here. Doesn't happen a lot. They're made really cheap and didn't realize it, but it was broke. Once a ground is broke, power is gonna try to find its way to burn off somewhere weird. And what it was doing is it found its way to this it was going through that bulb and then grounding out through here and dissipating inside the can. Because what I found was somebody else had tried very crappily to like wire crimp on and fix the repair and they didn't do a good job so it wasn't grounding. As soon as I came over and like squeezed the wire together, the light started to work. So what I did is I used one of the extra pieces off the military connector, I stripped off the rubber around it, and that is the same type of butt connector that is in here. And then I just used a little, I took the bulbs out so I wouldn't hit them by mistake. And it's a pain to work on this because to keep the bulbs from breaking when you're off-roading, this is all in like a rubber isolator, so these will kind of shake in here. The biggest problem you're gonna have with this trailer, if you're confident your wiring is correct, is gonna be a grounding issue somewhere. Take your time and chase your grounds. You might have rust somewhere, these trailers are old. Then the other thing to check is all throughout your connections, like back here, you should have your numbers. Make sure that your numbers are matched up. Trailers and the lights for the military, you're gonna have the lowest, least squared away guy that did the work on these in the military because the military doesn't care. The military is not gonna get pulled over for a ticket if their trailer lights don't work. They don't care. So they don't care that the lights don't work. They don't care that the brakes don't work. They just need it to get pulled and that's it. They neglect the crap out of these things. My advice is if you know your wiring's good, go around and check your grounds, check your grounds again, check them a third time. All right, that's a wrap. Any input, leave it in the comments. Thanks for stopping in. Thank you.